rough life. There's no daytime baseball for you to watch. What'd you do all day? I had to work all day today because we didn't have like yesterday and Tuesday, there was champions league football and there was baseball playoffs. It was great. Yeah. Today I just had to work. Like oh, what? You had pointless brutal, things that could have been emails or. Yeah. Emails were part of it. Uh, you know, we had a, yeah, we had a meeting today, a goodbye to Gordon Prouty, who was leaving the Westgate. Yeah. What? I know. You didn't know. even text me. Gordy's know, leaving. Ah. You know, I don't think we've ever had an employee leave. I should have wrote that into my contract that I'm leaving if Gordy's leaving. Well, I'm glad you did. But I, I don't think we've ever had an employee leave the property where uh, the race and sports department was so upset to hear that so and so was leaving. Like everyone's so bummed about it. Yeah, I'm really bummed. And here comes the rain. You, like, I can just hear it on my roof. So I'm going to. Before we get into the show, I'm going to UNLV Syracuse tomorrow night. That sounds like fun. Stadium. Gordy's a big Syracuse fan. Did he and go to Syracuse? What's that? Did he go to Syracuse? Uh, yeah, he went to Old, Domin Old Dominion and Syracuse. He's from Syracuse. And I'm going to buy Gordy some, some pops at the game. Obviously, I love Gordy. But don't you think, and I'm going to put you on the spot, don't you think that you, you love Gordy, you're rich. I'm a working class person. Don't you think you should send me the money to pay for his drinks? Go ahead. Uh, you've already gotten called a socialist once on social media <laughs> today. So, yes, yeah. I will Venmo you a yeah. few shekels to buy yeah. Gordy some drinks. What a so <laughs> socialist. That what? was funny. Tell I mean, he called you. He called you right out. It was like, absolutely not. They're not. This is the thing. They're not my ticket. So basically what ended up happening was. Brett's brother is married to Sam. I am not married to Brett, but Sam's like my sister, and it's her so birthday. Sam is a, is a woman. Okay, go Sam ahead. is a woman, yes. Does it matter? No, it could go either way with the name Sam. You didn't say Samantha. Samantha. Yeah, I've never called her Samantha in my life. Um, but she, it's her birthday. She's turning uh, 37. Ooh. Oh, she's young. She's Spicy. Young. So uh, we were supposed to go to Morgan Wallen over the summer, mm -hmm. And I didn't buy tickets, shocker, because I just never buy tickets until day of. And they get to Tampa, and I'm like, he's going to cancel. I had seen on social media. And I was like, I'm not coming up. He's going to cancel. Sure enough, show gets canceled. So I didn't buy tickets. She's like, all right, I'm going to buy better tickets. Because, like, you know, people got pissy. So she bought better tickets. But she only bought two. She didn't buy four. Oh. And I'm like, you got to buy four together. So I'd been waiting since July to buy four tickets together. Finally, I went on TickPick the other night. I was like, screw this. I'm buying four tickets and I'm going to sell yours. Well, I might have priced her two in club level a little too high. So they haven't sold yet. So I resorted to tweeting it out on social media. And then I dropped the price on TickPick. We'll see. They're probably going to get sold. And if not, uh, I guess I'm going to give away two tickets. But I really wanted four of us to sit together. And you suggested that I give it out for free. And you got called a socialist. Only because you're rich. I don't think that the guy who called me that appreciates your, you know, people like you. Who, tell me, tell me. Okay, let's start a threshold here. The, what Elon is Elon Musk? Jump in the con yeah, Elon Musk is yeah. rich. So yeah. please, yes, yeah, me and Elon in the same conversation. <laughs> He's pretty rich. Um, don't you have to be a? Okay, let's put it this way. Do you need to be a millionaire to be rich? I think you need to be a lot more than a millionaire to be rich. Okay, well. <laughs> There we go. So Nowadays. I think we've, now we put this debate to rest. I am not rich. So <laughs> you don't want to recap. You said that last week on the show. You don't want to recap the previous week. You're always, you're pushing forward. And well, here's the thing. We can recap and you okay. can tell me how the books did and you can tell me that the public got crushed. I just think it's boring. I think if we talk about we... actionable information, sharp bet, okay. I got a lot of sharp. survivor talk. I got a lot of sharp. No, they, the, the listeners don't want survivor talk. No, one guy, one guy was pissed, and that's because he's not in it. I, you know, I thought that guy like, was, you know what? I thought that guy was right. Because if I'm that guy and I'm out of my survivor contest or I'm not in a survivor contest, and these two jokers, all they want to do is talk about survivor, I'm sitting there going, who gives a shit? Why am I? Okay, well, I'm sorry, but there are people still alive. I'm in, li I'm alive in four, four survivor contests. I have one that is a local one I've done for a long time. It's a $600 buy-in. I bought one entry. I wasn't going to do it this year, but I was like, all right. He hit me up like the last day. He's like, why aren't you in it? I'm like, uh, here's Venmo $600 just so I can donate. 
and now I'm one of seven left. They sent really? out a group text and said, do you guys want a $7,500 each payout and then play for the rest? And I thought, you know what? Sure. I'll take the 7,500 that pays for all of my football contests for this year, essentially. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we're playing for, I think it was like 24,000 something rest. And one guy voted no chop. And so, you know, that guy's going to lose this week. It's my favorite. Kelly and I are in, we, Kelly and I have two entries in the big survivor contest in Las Vegas. So let's talk, let's take everybody through it, including the guy that hates the survivor talk. We're going to make him listen to this again. Right. So I had an entry with my buddy from high school, roommate from college. You had an entry with Chris Thurston. We what was it like you and Jeff at West Virginia? Was it just like a drunken mess for like four years? Excuse you? Like what? West Virginia. I went, to, I went to Kansas State and we have a lot of alcohol consumed. I think I would have died if I went to West Virginia. I've been to Morgantown three times. I'm pretty sure I almost died each of those three times. One time I almost froze to death. It was not from alcohol. All I can say about Morgantown, our time there, they, they served refreshments. I can confirm that. Um, Did you have a fake ID? They served refreshments, Kelly. Let's move on. So me, Kelly, uh, we, we, all of us have, all four of us have 25% of both entries. That's the deal. We both used Houston week two against, against two, Chicago. Yep. And then we both used the New York Giants week three against New England. Jack. And then we decided as a group to all use the, or both use the 49ers on Sunday. They beat New England. So we, the only reason that we still have two entries is because we had both used the Jets in week three. Because I think we would have split it up. I think we would have done one San Francisco, one Jets. The Jets somehow lost. You mean one Bengals, one Jets? No, no, no. Oh, one last Sunday, week, you mean? Before. Well, we were, oh, yes. You and I before we partnered, before. yes. But so I we, think if, I think if we had partnered up the week before, we would have done one Bengals, one Jets. And so we'd only had one left anyway. I agree with that. but Which we is why my argument was go double San Francisco, because had we not partnered up, we'd both be on San Francisco. It's a good point. So now we're trying to figure out what we're going to do this week. I, What I said to the group last night was – and it's a very busy group chat. I don't like that's I don't like that. But we I've got a lot to say, and I, I, I just want to get make sure that everything was, gets said. And we're gonna we're gonna run through all the sharp plays later on the show. But I've seen our most respected groups here take Kansas City, lay Kansas City. I believe that the top two picks this week. I know the top two picks this week are going to be Seattle and San Francisco, because people are saving Kansas City. Because they're available, they play Thanksgiving week and they play Christmas. So those, so you so know. I Seattle's actually think. Well, here's the thing. I actually think Seattle's going to be number one. I do so too. So I found a, a website, SurvivorAtlas.com. I've used Survivor Grid before. I've got my own spreadsheet, but I are any of those websites paying you for this endorsement? No, um, but I've just I just like to kind of see what the math looks like. But Survivor Atlas specifically takes the Circa, uh, Circa Survivor Contest and analyzes the data. Because if you remember how they'll tweet it out, it is a fucking mess. It is just like, it's just a printout. And now this actually organizes the data for you so you can see. So according to them, here's here's kind of my hangup. 57% of people still have Seattle available. We okay. have them available in one entry, not the other. 40% yeah. of people have San Francisco. So I'm assuming... You didn't use San Francisco last week, which 277 people did, which was 43% of the pool. Then the next one is Houston, 37% still available. And then this is where it gets dicey. Houston, 80, only 89% of people still have the Chiefs available. 76% Buffalo. I mean, there's because it's so early and only four weeks in, about to be week five. There's just so much still to, to guess. And it's like, yeah. do we zig? Because everybody's going to be on Seattle this week. And that's well, what we, we have, me. I think we have two choices. And we've talked about them, but we're gonna, we'll air them out to the audience. We can either, in my opinion, the move, if we're going for the win, is to use Kansas City on one entry and then kind of roll the dice with, let's say, Chicago or Denver or Jacksonville on the other entry, then we're fading the top two most picked teams. Yeah. Or 
if we want to play it safe and just try to progress, which I don't think is a bad idea. I'm not against progressing your entry with Chris already used Seattle. So I use Seattle and the one that's in my name, and then the other one we use Kansas City. So we're taking the top two, or I'm sorry, the second and the top two money line favorites that are available to us. Let's say that because we don't have San Francisco available. So we're, we're, we're playing the safe route. And then we, in that case, obviously, we'll be hoping that San Francisco loses to Arizona. And I do like our chances of moving forward with both of those. And what's more, if you look at Seattle's schedule, there's not a lot of upcoming games to really use them. I agree. We're yeah, talking week They week. should be able to beat the Giants. But here's my question. Do you think the contest is going to go the distance? Because I do. I, I think that one person will make it to the end. I mean, I think more than one person. I, yeah. I get the better way of saying that is I don't think it'll end before the season does. I agree. So I do think we can use Seattle late. Here's my one caveat. And this is not something that any of the math guys are going to agree on, but I really don't care. Do you, because... think that those, do you think those math guys are nerds? No, I think that they're arrogant to a fault. To think that they're smarter than everybody else. Oh, and they that's definitely where, think they're smarter than everybody else. And that's where the problem is. Because, like, so here's me. I like to look at the math. I like to look at power ratings. I like to look at matchups. I like to look at injuries. There's a lot that goes into handicapping, whether it's college football or NFL. And I know that the handicap is different. But mm -hmm. scheduling spots, I have been called out on Twitter before by saying it doesn't matter. Yet, Time and time again, we see teams fall flat in between divisional games or not cover. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying Seattle's going to lose to the Giants because they're playing the 49ers on deck, but they just were in a dogfight with the Lions. Now here comes Daniel Jones, who's 5-22, and and straight up like does not win these games after that are not in the 1 p.m. slate. But Seattle has... I just feel like Geno Smith, your quarterback from West Virginia, has been kind of been playing above this level that I just don't believe he's at. So I, what are you? I just what, have some concerns this, this about very, that very game long with San Francisco on deck. You're saying what exactly? You what don't want to use Seattle? It's not that I don't want to use Seattle. I just don't feel great. Last week was so nice. I was like, I like you know what? I, I'm going to tell you right now. If I had my druthers, we would use Kansas City. And we would roll the dice on the other entry. We would not use either of the top two pick teams. And we would try to win. That's what that's, I think we should do. And I've, I've got I've got partners here and I respect that. But I think I think we would I would do that because I don't think many people are going to use Kansas City because everybody's saving them. And, and I think, part of me I, thinks I we like need to, to save them that. too. Because now we have I, to look at Christmas and it's going, we're gonna no, have that, one we'll, option we'll on Christmas. Cross that bridge when we come to it. But I like the idea of playing for the win, going against the top two most picked teams. We're getting an upset seemingly every week. I mean, based on what we've seen the first four weeks, one of those two is going to lose on Sunday. And if one – look, if, if we could pick – let's say we pick Denver or pick Chicago, for example. If they won and then either Seattle or San Francisco lost, we'd be in, in the catbird seat going into Monday Night Football at Kansas City. We'd be looking great. Whereas if we take Seattle – and, you know, 65% of the people or whatever, I don't even know what the projections are. Let's say 50% of the people take Seattle and we just move forward another week with everybody else along with us. It doesn't do as much for us. You're right. And I would, I would agree with that. And that's where it gets a little dicey. I would not be shocked in the slightest who the Arizona Cardinals could not have looked worse last week against the commanders in no. any form or fashion. To no. step up and beat the San Francisco 49ers who still have a lot of injury concerns. And a divisional game at home. We're going to talk about it more on Saturday. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm excited about it. It's, very, it's a fun contest because there's a lot. There's so much strategy involved. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of different angles to take. I, I like the idea of taking a chance. Do you want to go? Where do you want me to start here? Do you want to? Because we usually go chronologically with college football sharp plays first, but we're doing a lot of NFL talk. Or do you want me to complain about last weekend? No. What would you, what would you like me to do first? Sharp report. Go. Which college or pro? College. Always college first. Let me let well, me recap how you did last week. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. We, you know, we, we had a bad we had a bad weekend in college football. We 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 cannot 
do underdogs ever win in college football? Yeah, I had Arizona. They won. Yeah. Western okay. Kentucky should have won. My goodness, that was well, should have won and won. Auburn should have won. North Carolina should have won. Yeah, I had a North bad North number North. on NIU. Somebody kill me, please. Okay, let me go. Well, all right, here's a line that's moved up a lot. I already mentioned I'm going to the game tomorrow night at Allegiant Stadium. Syracuse is on the road against UNLV. Mm -hmm. Boy, UNLV missed that QB last week. Man, they really struggled without that cat. Are they, they glad put, they didn't pay him his hundred thousand yeah, dollar ransom? I think they only put fifty nine on Fresno on Saturday. Do you afternoon. think that that's going to hurt him? How good they looked without him? Do you think that that's going to hurt his? Well, stuff? I, I think he's already hurt himself. You know, if if UNLV had gone, let's just say they went nine and three or ten and two this season, and he'd been the starting quarterback, he would have been set for life in this town. You know that. You know that. What is it? What I know. Who's advising point. this? Who is advising this guy? I mean, he would at least have a casino host job forever. I mean, yes, of course. It'd be nice to have a bag of money, obviously, but would you he, rather have be a bag selling of... cars at Finley Toyota? <laughs> would you rather have a bag of money or have like several easy job opportunities for the rest of your life? I, I would take option two. He's a young man. He'll, he'll figure it out. That number has gone all the way to UNLV six and a half. I'm kind of, so, I mean, I'm kind of hoping that the, that it goes to seven and I can bet Syracuse plus seven. Because I, I just – I think that's too much. I think that's that number's crazy. Syracuse off a bye. Syracuse uh, – Syracuse is a decent team, too. I, I That number's a bit much. You're, you're talking about pushing a touchdown here. I think that's a little crazy. Let's go to Saturday. By the way, you know, it's, it's kind of cool. I know you lived here for a long time. It is cool to be talking about major college football games here in Las Vegas. You know, I got to go to LSU USC, and three weeks from tomorrow is another Friday night game, Boise State UNLV. That's gonna be awesome. I'll we'll definitely go to that. Oh yeah, that will so be a it's, good game. It's, it's pretty cool to actually have major college football games. It's not the SEC, and I get that, but we're getting some pretty cool college football games in Las Vegas, which is cool. Saturday, Appalachian State is a big sharp play. They're at Marshall. They took them. They took plus three, plus three and a half. Boston College plus three and plus two and a half at UVA for sure is one. Stanford plus nine and a half and plus nine against Virginia Tech. What did you think of the end of that Virginia Tech Miami game? We didn't talk about that. Here's Somebody, the thing. You, you, well, you, you guys talk, accuse me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got to back this up. You hate Miami football. Uh, see, this is what I was just getting ready to say. You guys accused me in the group yes. chat. You yes. literally, John Hogan goes, "You don't hate Texas, you hate Miami." I don't hate Miami. I yes, just don't think does. Miami is as good as advertised. I think it was one of the weirdest plays I've ever seen in my life, and I've watched a million football games. I mean, my brother, you know, my brother Peter went to Virginia Tech. He worked for the football team. He's a huge Hokie fan. He and I talked about it the other day. That kid, one thousand percent, did not catch the ball. No, he did not catch the football. But they called it a touchdown on the field, and by the letter of the law, it says it has to be indisputable to overturn. There was nothing indisputable. That's I so cannot what do you believe do? we still do not know what a catch yeah. is like a decade later. That kid did not catch that ball, okay? that No way. Terrible I had no call. dog in the fight. I would agree with you. He did not catch the ball, but no. here we are. Penn State minus 27 and a half against UCLA. Really sharp money on the over in that game. Very low total in that game. That total's been bet up uh, from 44 and a half to 46 and a half. And I'll give you one more. I'll say Georgia Tech minus nine against Duke. Duke is off of an incredible win over North Carolina. On that sucked Saturday. really bad. Game Thank you for recapping that. They never should have won that game. So now I need you to give me, because I gave you a whole bunch of stuff there. I need the hottie threesome or foursome or fivesome. Whatever you're doing. You're going to get annoyed because the chuckle, laughable long shot is in the parlay this week. And that's the because rum, the rum last, last week I felt like I really forced trying to find a third dog when I was like, Western Kentucky's winning this game. Like, they're going to win this game. It's going to happen. And that's how I feel about Cal this week. I'm like, Cal is going to win this football game. I need to put them in the parlay as well. So I did. Uh, and I also put Rutgers in the parlay, which was kind of tough because I went back and forth. Like, I would have loved to make a case for Arkansas this weekend. I also would have loved to make a case for Purdue, but I don't think either one of them can win the game outright. So I went Rutgers over Nebraska, and then I went South Carolina plus nine 
think I got nine and a half. Let me look. I got to look on my Picket app, but I believe it was nine and a half and uh, plus 265, 260. Has there ever been a, have you ever seen a coach in any sport that was more made for a program than Greg Schiano? Is that how you said it? I thought it was Schiano. Oh, maybe it's Schiano. Schiano? I don't know. I'm really bad at pronouncing names. Weird, a weird thing about me, I don't watch sports with sound when I'm at work. I, got, I always have the sound off. Uh, I, maybe it is Schiano. You know what's funny? I don't blame you because some of the announcers are so bad. I think I would like to watch them with the sound off. Like I, I, I always see people tweeting about Tom Brady's performance, whether positive or negative, mostly negative it feels. But I don't know if I've even heard Tom yet. I have never. I have not because I don't. If I'm at work, I don't have sound. I have no Yeah, but idea. you don't like Jason Kelsey. No, that's not and, true. And I, I don't think he's that good either. I think, he's being, I think he's being shoved down our throats. I don't like Travis mm -hmm. Kelsey. I don't have a problem with Jason Kelsey. Okay. Um, I don't know anymore. I can't keep up with all the people that you don't like. Now. I've completely lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, you like to watch the games with the sound off. Yeah, but where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, Rutgers. Rutgers beating Washington was one of the really good games for us in college football last week. That was and, shocking. I actually Washington should have won that game. I agree. That game, that game was also Friday night at the same time as Miami game. We uh, – I don't know. We just we couldn't seem to win any of our big college decisions on Saturday. We did not did not have a good day Saturday. Hopefully, that changes for us a little bit this week. Okay. Do you want to go? Why don't you give me your NFL best bet, and then I, I got a whole bunch of sharp plays to run through. But you you go first because I don't want I don't want you to cheat. To cheat? Uh, your, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think anybody that is even remotely sharp is going to be on this play. Uh, it's the Denver Broncos minus two and a half. It's I like disgusting. The I even tease the other side of the Raiders because I think it's going to probably land three or six or four or probably one because I laid two and a half. That's how the Broncos do things. Uh, so ultimately, I have just been sick of going one and one every single week. My double digit or my excuse me, my barking dog in the NFL why has do you done do, really why well. Why do you do those air quotes? Isn't it called the barking dog? Yeah, it's called the barking so dog. Why do you do the quotes? On bet on it. Because bet on it, it's barking dog. It's like, okay. it's like trademark it called the barking something. dog. So it's not really barking dog. It's just barking dog. Uh, Look, it is. Which it's dogs good. have a good shot to win outright? Um, and last week, the Chargers had a really good shot to win that game outright. They did not. Yeah, they did. Uh, but they did cover the seven and a half. So I was very happy with that. The week before had the Rams beating the 49ers. That was really nice, but my yeah. best bets have been on a, a two week slide. And so I, I called some, I made some calls. I was like, all right, listen, obviously I'm doing something wrong here in my handicap. I'm picking these dogs and they're you think not that, winning. Wait, hold on a second. You think that losing two in a row means you need to make no, changes. I think, I think what it means, I think what it means is that I'm just not seeing the board clearly. And I, so I was like, all right, let me get I like picks, the Broncos kid. in this spot. I know, but I like the Broncos in this spot oh, against like the, the Raiders yeah. because I like the Broncos defense. But I called my buddy Ralph and I said, hey, do you have any data to back this up? Because a lot of people like the Raiders because they're banged up just like last week everybody was everybody acted like the raiders were dead and they, of course they win that football game but there well, but is they, the raiders should not have won that game correct there but there's a some... questionable call that brought back a cleveland and touchdown. there's some inherent problems in that locker room Devonte adams is pretending yeah. to have a hamstring injury so he gets traded max crosby probably has every kind of injury mm -hmm. i mean he's forever banged up i like to look for home teams in the division, short favorites, Denver fits the bill. But here was the question that we had in regards to even Survivor. They just won as touchdown underdogs at the Jets, and the week before won as touchdown underdogs at the Bucks. How do teams like that fare? And it turns out they fare really well, especially if they are back home as divisional home favorites. It's almost 67%. So I how, often use is that? Well, how often does that happen? That's not, I didn't be, ask for the data that subset, can't be a but it's a sample. That's Don't tell me that 67% is two out of three. Because that, that can't let be me, a big sample please, of, of oh, teams. Let me, get, let me get Ralph's text up. Hold okay. on. Hold oh, you, on. You're Ralph. talking about teams that won on the road as a touchdown dog. No, he didn't give me the data. He didn't give me the data size. So that's the problem. I didn't I didn't ask how many. I can ask. I'll ask. Regardless. Mm -hmm. That'll be exciting for the show. You text in and wait for the text back. I, it doesn't matter. I, I don't love this week. 
Okay. I gave out the Bengals as my barking dog, mainly because I like them in a teaser spot. Ravens mm -hmm. looked amazing, right? They beat Josh yeah, Allen and the Bills. So oh, everybody's going to go back, back to the Ravens. And I love the AFC North because the line's always three. No matter how shitty one of the teams is, it's two and a half or three, maybe three and a half if the team's extra shitty. It doesn't matter. It's wild. The Ravens on Sunday looked like the best team in the NFL. And yep. that was a that was a really bad spot for Buffalo. They were 3-0. and They had just won in a blowout on Monday night. Then they got to go on the road at Baltimore. Yep. A really terrible schedule spot for the Bills, and it showed. They got their butts kicked. Baltimore yeah. looked really good. Let me run through tonight. Atlanta, minus one and a half against Tampa. That got bet up this morning. We're at two and a half right now. Remember so, the Superbook. Explain that really quickly. I know uh, we're running out of time, but Sammy P texted us in the group and said, you know, people were kind of giving him some grief about it. I go, yeah, you know, that movement from one and a half to two and a half is, is pretty significant. I was kind of being a smart ass, but can you – Talk about how maybe insignificant or maybe significant it is. Oh, it's somewhat significant as somebody that had, unfortunately, had Falcons minus two and a half in the big uh, football handicapping contest in town Ugh. on Sunday. I, I, I wouldn't call it a nothing move. Okay. And it's very unlikely. I mean, the books are not going to go from one and a half all the way to three. So, you okay. know, you, go, you can go to two and a half and see where the betters take you from there. If they continue to bet Atlanta at two and a half, that's when you can go to three. So pe people were criticizing Sammy P. Is that what you're saying? Well, because he has, I think he has Bucks minus one. I'm not sure what he has. I, I just oh, I did the show I'm with him this even, morning, and I don't listen to his picks. My job is to come on and give out picks. I love Sam P. Uh, I don't know. So you would I mean, say sharp money is on the Falcons minus out, one and a half? Without question. Okay. And I'll tell you, and then I'll go to the game on Sunday morning early. 6.30 out here, 9.30, where Kelly is. They took the Jets, plus two and a half, even. They're playing Minnesota in London. Minnesota. Which is what happened last time I took Aaron Rodgers in London. Minnesota has, has shocked us. I'll tell you that, right? You know, we, I like them under their win total. I, mean, I know it sounds Well, crazy, I mean, their whole team was know, all left for dead. I mean, I know that. But they and look are, at Sam Darnold. That team is as well coached. I mean, they are as well coached as any team in the league, maybe outside of Kansas City. They're. Flores comfortable in that offense. They are very well coached, but I get I get the spot from the Jets here because Minnesota's 4-0. They just had a what has to be an emotional win for them against Green Bay. And the Jets are coming off of a very bad loss to Denver. Uh, I'll give you a couple more. Pittsburgh minus two and a half. That's a Sunday night game. So against Dallas. Dallas is really banged up, especially on the defensive side of the ball. They are very, very banged up. I was a little surprised that it, you know, we're at Pittsburgh two and a half. That seems like a lot, but that's what they're betting. The sharp accounts are still betting Pittsburgh at that number. And then this one came in uh, right as me and Kelly were sitting down to start the show. They bet Kelly's favorite team, the Bears. Bears. They played Bears minus three and a half against Carolina. And, and Kelly and I have talked about using the Bears in Survivor this week. We've talked about it. I'm not saying we're going to get to it. It's a consideration. And then the one game, it looks to me like, and look, famous last words. I can't say this is what happens, what's happening. But it looked to me like they faked down the Saint game, and then they could go back and bet it back up. That's what I asked you yesterday. No, you didn't. You asked me if they faked it up so that they could bet it back down. I'm looking at it, I think, but... You know, you wait, wait, you, rewind. You think they bet the Saints early and then came back on Kansas City? Yes. Okay, so the opposite of what I accuse them of That's doing. That's what I think. But I don't, I mean, look, maybe that everybody comes in at the end and, and plays the Saints on Sunday night and Monday morning and it closes four. Uh, this is why I don't, don't want to take the Chiefs because I like the Saints. But the groups that the groups and then you that we had made me think not to like the Saints. The groups that we have on Kansas City are not groups that in the past we've seen giving us fake bets. They're groups that have given us the real stuff. They bet Kansas City minus four and a half. Kansas City, very sharp side. That's the Monday night game against New Orleans. I know there's all this like talk about, oh, man, Mahomes has nobody to throw to. He'll be fine. Okay, he's Mahomes. He'll figure it out. Kelly's guy, Travis Kelsey, is still there. They, they've got a few guys they can get the football to. Kansas City is so well coached. They can, they'll scheme it up. I mean, do you really want, do you really want to get to the Monday night game? 
and look at the field of the game stars and say, I have Dennis Allen and Derek Carr, and the other side has Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. Is that what you want for yourself, Kelly? Kelly? I no, I no, but guess what? I know they're gonna have the refs in their pocket. That's yeah, the good exactly. news at home. Well, it's like uh, allegedly. Allegedly, I mean, allegedly. I, I think we've seen enough examples over the last few years to know Even that more reason he, to like Kansas City. That's what I mean. I, I I like the Saints at first early in the week on Monday. Chris and I were talking about it, and then you text us that a sharp group played Kansas City. Yeah. I am just I'm just beside myself this week, okay? I, it's a lot. It's a really stressful situation. We had some offers for people to buy in. We said, yeah. no, we're not doing this yet. I, I'm, and even, and here's the reality. Even if they did and we were free rolling the contest, like that's not enough to take away the stress. Do you this feel is like bad stress I usually feel in like November. This is like the stress I felt on Thanksgiving. including Brett? I mean. No, I don't feel bad not including Brett. I do. What? Why? Why does Brett need to be included? He's the guy that went all Ravens. I didn't go all Ravens. So this is an interesting conversation. Last survivor note, then we'll go to the mailbag. You can't look at it like, oh, you guys are only in week five. Because I had one of my coworkers say that to me before we started the show. It's like, don't look at the calendar. Look at how many people are left. You know, it's possible that you can get to week 10 next year and not be in as advantageous a spot as you're in right now because so many people are eliminated. I know it's only October 3rd, but we're really, really far in that contest. 95 plus percent of the people are out. That's far. Kelly? All right, we're, I'm trying to open up the mailbag and you're, well, you're not helping. Okay. What's the matter with you, man? You, you, you've, got, you've got the attention span of like, I don't know. Because I'm over here sweating about games that are like Sunday and Monday. Literally, yeah. maybe they're hot flashes because I'm getting old. I don't know. But it's Survivor, Thursday, I have too. been working on the Survivor spreadsheet all week long. And you just you just know how to make it worse. That's all. The end. Okay. That is kind of my role. At okay, go to the mailbag. GWK1313 on X says, if Alabama played the Edmonton Elks, what would the line be? I replied to this guy on Twitter because I saw this one and it made me mm -hmm. die because I was like, oh, John Murray loves these hypothetical games that are never going to be played. So this is you know, that question actually caught, caught my eye, and I'm not even saying this to be funny. I don't I don't know the answer. They are no longer the Edmonton Eskimos. No, they haven't been the Eskimos for a long time. Oh, uh, and why like is a that? A couple of years. Is that that's because of your generation, right? Yeah. Listen, okay. I I spoke up on Twitter earlier. You got called a socialist. I agreed with uh, <laughs> a funny thing that yeah. that Clay Travis had said, and everybody's like losing their minds about. Something that is not what I said at all. Shocker. At T.S. Finky on X says, it's almost Super Contest reboot time, which reminds me, I need to send J.H. a reboot video. Son of a bitch. What winning percentage did the past winners have? Is it higher or lower than the full season contest? John Murray, can you explain to anybody that doesn't know what the reboot is? The Super Contest reboot is a chance to, a uh, second chance in the Super Contest. It starts week 10. It runs through week 18, so the last nine weeks of the regular season. I, I looked it up. Here are the winning records from the last three. For the winner, went 31, 13, and 1, 32, Ooh. and 13, 33, and 12, taking 45 games. So that wow. looks like, I mean, I, I don't I actually don't have the other numbers in front of me, but that looks to be about in line with what the winners do in the big contest, right? I mean, it's about, it's, I think it's a little bit better because. You've got smaller a smaller sample, sample size. but there's a lot less people in that one. So it's, I think it's about, it's pretty darn close, let's say. Oh, Thanks. I think I remember the answer to this question. At Schwartz underscore Anil on excess from last week's question, John Murray, what did you study in college and what is the most important thing you learned that helped you get to where you are today? Well, according to Kelly, all I studied was like drinking rolling rocks and being rolling. Ro you drink yeah. rolling rocks in college. Yeah, rolling rock is brewed in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. That's close to Morgantown. Oh, that's a, rolling rocks. A good beer. Any uh, any green bottled beer is disgusting. I would drink a rolling rock tonight if I could. What's wrong with rolling? Rocks? I mean, you can. You just have to go find <laughs> out where the hell they are. Anyway, yeah, what point. did you? What was your major in college? Uh, I, was, uh, I majored in English. At I knew West that. Virginia University. That's how I ended up being so incredibly well spoken. I think 
what did I learn? I mean, this should, is have been, get, should have been a lawyer. This is going to get me in trouble, but I'm going to say it anyway. One thing I've learned over the last 20 years or so is what you, what you did and studied in college is going to be a lot less important for you than finding a career you're actually interested in and working harder than all the guys and gals next to you. Yep. I mean, yeah, I know That's, you can't say that. You can't say that. I yes, you can, because it's well, an absolute utter truth. Do you think I have a broadcast degree? Of course I don't. I have a business degree. It is and true. I learned you, more you about need... business in the first decade I lived in Las Vegas than I ever learned at K-State. Sorry, Kansas State. But those cold calls that they made us take, learn how to do in marketing class when I was over there asking them about social media, but at the time really had Facebook and MySpace, and the teacher's going, no, no, cold calling super important. <laughs> Nowadays, everybody wants to have some bullshit job where they work from home, i.e. I'm Hold on I'll be quiet. I.e. I would you like to see I, my schedule? I have very, I I have every, a lot going on. Look at this. I'm not saying that every single person is like this, but I there's a lot of people, a there's yesterday. a lot of younger people, they want to work from home, a.k.a. go to the gym, go out to lunch, walk their dog, and do absolutely nothing all day. And not Kelly. Kelly works hard. I do do a lot of laundry. I'm not going to lie. I do a lot of laundry. You. I make sure my house is clean. I mean, I got 20 minutes between videos. Like, get up. Not you. Kelly, not everything's about you. The world doesn't revolve around you, kid. All this this younger generation, that's what they want to do. So how could you should go out there and actually apply yourself and work hard. You'll be fine, even if you're in some field that you didn't study for. When, I, when I'm interviewing people and hiring people, I'm impressed. By their, Would by you say that degree. Chase Michelson is a hard worker? Chase Michelson? Oh, very much. Hmm. Very much. And I, I started I would have been the no on that one. I started a rumor on Twitter that he was the Angel Reese vote <laughs> for rookie did, of the year. Wait, back yeah. up. You did what? Well, so Angel, uh, Caitlin Clark won the WNBA rookie of the year. Yeah. She got every vote but one. Yeah. Chase Michelson is a uh, is a card he likes carrying to WNBA games. Caitlin Clark Hader. Oh, oh I time. didn't know that. That doesn't oh, shock me. And he, I, I, I started a rumor that he was the one vote against her. How could anybody possibly have not voted for her to be the rookie there? It wasn't even close. Oh, boy. All right. Flynn, Fly, oh, whoa, I can't even read. At yeah. Flying Redbirds 23 no, on excess. Flynn. Flynn. Fly in. F-L-Y-N Redbirds. Flying like a bird. Flying. flying red. Oh, yeah, it's flying. 23. Yeah, I might be an idiot, but at least I can read that. Uh, on a two no I. That's the point. Fly in. Like, if I, instead of I in Vegas, yeah. I had Kelly in Vegas. Like, if my last name was I like an in. Be honest, I don't really get it. Okay. On a two team teaser, I've heard people say only play at minus 110. That is correct. The app I use has two team teasers minus 115. Are those five cents okay enough to keep doing teasers or should I stay away from them? I think you'd be okay if he's talking about NFL six point teasers at minus 115. If, if they were NFL, you would, you would go up to what? Minus 120? But I mean, a, after minus 120, you've got to hit it pretty yeah. high percentage. Oh, yeah. But I, I'd say, I'd say Flynn Redbirds, if you can, if you can do it at minus 115, you've got my. All right. You get the bookmaker's seal of approval. That tells oh, yeah. you all you need to know. See, now Gary in UFC 51 on X says, do you think the Chiefs are miles ahead of everybody else? Is five to one a good price to win the Super Bowl? Miles ahead? I, don't, I absolutely don't think the Chiefs are mile out of, miles ahead of everybody else. I think right now when San Francisco gets all their horses back, they're better than Kansas City. I think Baltimore is better than Kansas City. It's possible on a good day, that Buffalo is better than Kansas City is. No, I don't. And you want me to take them in Survivor? Are, are they playing San Francisco, a healthy San Francisco? Or no, Baltimore? they're not, but I'm just stressed. No, I don't think that they're miles out of everybody. I, I, I think it's becoming a little bit too cliche to talk about how, like, no, they're not that good because I'm hearing everybody say that now. And uh, Kansas City is good. They've got – they have Patrick Mahomes. They've got Andy Reid. They've got a great coaching staff. But they're 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 banged up right now. They've been lucky to be four zero. I'm putting that nicely. They are not miles ahead of everybody else. Nobody in this league is miles ahead of everybody else. Not right now. All right. Okay. Last question is at FNG Sports. See, there's another N. 
Yeah, it's and any, yeah. any sharp action on UFC 307. Do you think Pereira yeah. is a beatable favorite? So I, you know, what amazes me about Pereira is how often he fights. You know, the, the last time the UFC was in Salt Lake City was in July of last year. I was lucky enough to get to go to that. He won in a fight that I thought he lost, but he did win. And then he's he's fought three times since then, won them all, and now he's fighting again on Saturday. I can't imagine he loses this fight. It'd be disastrous for the UFC. They've already got too many. They've got all these champions right now that they can't promote because nobody likes their fighting style. But hey, there's like one guy that they like to promote. He's awesome. He's fun to watch. I don't think he's going to lose. I'm worried about I bet on Jose Aldo. Ooh, you did? Um, and I just, I got a bad feeling about it. I just, something tells me, I, something tells me I'm going to lose, but I, I bet Jose Aldo, that's on the main card. I'm a big fan of Jose Aldo's. I've always been a big fan of his. Someday I'll tell you the story of my night at the Conor McGregor Jose Aldo fight at MGM Grand in 2015. That was a wild night, Kelly. But I've always been a big Jose Aldo fan. I think he's going to win on Saturday. And he was a good plus. He's been bet down. Okay. He's been bet down uh, a decent amount. But I think you can still get him like almost plus 140-ish. I think We have uh, three and a half minutes left. And our producers are sending a text onto the screen that would like to talk about playoff baseball. Oh, my God. I, well, you know, uh, well, first I of all. I talk about it, but I, we got a few minutes left. Well, first of all, I love baseball playoffs. I'm going to go. You know, I've been, I've been wanting to go to a playoff game in San Diego ever since I moved to the West Coast. And a, they never made the playoffs. And then they finally made it in 2020, but it was too dangerous to have fans at the games. Remember that? And then I didn't want to say the area was too dangerous, but okay. Well, 2022, I just couldn't make it. But I'm, I'm going to go Tuesday night. Tuesday night, game three, they're going to be against the Dodgers in the division series. I'm going to be at Petco Park. I'm looking forward to that. But much more importantly for us here, we don't want the Tigers to win. We don't want the Tigers to win. We, we've got live oh, no. in Detroit. Detroit. I saw some Tigers tickets floating around today on well, there's some big media. Look, there's some big Tiger bets out there. Good for those people. On like All kidding aside, good for them. I, I, it looked to us like they were sellers at the deadline. You know, they traded away some players. They were in a very, a very competitive division, the American League Central. The American League Central has three of the remaining four teams in the American League. Wow, and we won that division? Hell yes to us. Cleveland, So Cleveland, Detroit, that series starts on Saturday in Cleveland, and I spent my whole summer rooting for the Cleveland Guardians. They used to you be might as well continue Indians, to do so. And I'm going to continue to do so in the division series. Okay, so oh. who do you need for the first round? Because right now in the well, wild card, yeah, the Mets we, are playing the Brewers tonight. Yeah, we don't really we don't really care what happens in that game tonight. I mean, I'm going to root for the Mets for my boy, our producer Louis D'Onofrio. He's a Mets fan, so I'll go for the Mets. Good to know. The uh, the the series, the series that are coming up. We definitely we want the Tigers. Uh, we want the Tigers to lose. Excuse me. We want the Indians. So or the whatever. So I'm going <laughs> to. The I'm whatever gonna, the fucks. In the other series, you've got to you've got to approach it like this. In the other American League series, I have to root for the Yankees. Why? Because for Ariel. I want, no, I'm asking who the book. I don't care about your friends' book, fandoms. No, 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 no. The book is rooting for the Yankees because oh. if Detroit wins, the Yankees are a tougher opponent for them mathematically than Kansas City is. If we if we have to get into a situation where we have to sell off some of that liability, we're going to want to do it against the Yankees, not the Royals. Sorry to your friend Andy Samuelson. Oh, I don't care Royals. about the Royals. Well, you love Andy. Yeah, uh, but, or no, or Andy, for that you. matter. I, I'm going to root for San Diego to beat the Dodgers and I, I guess uh, the Mets over the Phillies. I don't like the Phillies. So, yeah, screw the Phillies. I'll go Mets. And then, uh, you know, our good That's friend. Literally, oh, you're rooting for. No, well, you. I explained why we're rooting for the Yankees. I All explained right. that. Does that make sense to you? Nope, you're out of time. We got 24 uh, seconds left. Anything you'd like to leave our audience with? I didn't know that it was a timed show. I mean, 45 minutes. It's a, it, there's a time. I didn't know you're not, there's nothing on your wrist. I didn't know that the show was time. What give me, uh, you got 10 seconds. What do you want to do in survivor? Give me two teams. Do it right now. Name them. Go. I don't, I don't want to think about survivor anymore. I am so stressed. 
I think you're going to make me go Kansas City, and I think we have to take Caleb Williams for the second week in a row because, oh, by the way, we took you're them still in going. splash. I said, I said you have 10 seconds, and now you're talking. We about took them seconds. in splash last week, so then who the fuck are we going to take in splash this week? Why don't oh, we do it's this? just gotten so much worse. Why don't we do Chiefs, Bears, and Circa, and Seattle in splash? No. I don't want to use Seattle. Otherwise, I'd like to use Seattle here because then we're still going to be rooting against We want Seattle to lose. I don't want Seattle on Splash. We'll talk about it later. 